In the next several lessons, we explore some interesting facts and ideas about the outer gaseous Jovian planets, including Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. First up, let's take a close look at the largest planet, which is Jupiter. If you see two bright points of light in the night sky, the brighter of the two is planet Venus. The other could be either Mars or Jupiter, which are about equally as bright. A reddish hue would indicate Mars. A more whitish hue, as shown here, means you found planet Jupiter. In the early 1600s, the astronomer Galileo pointed his telescope at Jupiter and saw four adjacent dots, which he deduced to be moons because they moved in such a fashion that they looked to be orbiting Jupiter. This is a time-lapse animation. They don't orbit this fast. Actually, it takes days for these moons to orbit, but that's still pretty fast, enough to see notable differences in their positions from one night to the next. Galileo's observation was revolutionary, revealing to us that Earth was not necessarily at the center of everything. Eventually, this led us to understand that all planets in our solar system, Earth included, revolve around the Sun, not around us. Jupiter is primarily a big ball of hydrogen and helium surrounding a much smaller rocky core. Much more hydrogen than helium, actually. The outer atmosphere is colored by trace compounds. The white bands, for example, contain frozen ammonia. The reddish bands contain carbon and sulfur compounds. The great red spot is a huge cyclone, a bit larger than our entire planet Earth. It's been around for hundreds of years, and models suggest it will take hundreds more before it dies out. This time-lapse video shows the dynamic nature of Jupiter's red spot nestled within the flowing bands. What do you suppose Jupiter looks like from its south pole? Think about that. Yeah, like a bullseye. Huh? The deeper beneath the surface, the greater the pressure. Eventually, the pressure gets so great that the hydrogen is squeezed into this liquid metallic phase. That's right, metallic. Look where hydrogen is located in the periodic table. To the left side with all the metals. Because this element is so light, however, it only forms the metallic phase under great pressures, as is found deep beneath the surface of Jupiter. Electric currents can flow easily through this metallic phase, which explains, in part, why Jupiter has such a strong magnetic field. This, in turn, gives rise to intense aurora at both the north and south poles. Earth's aurora results when our magnetosphere captures solar wind. Jupiter, by contrast, makes its own aurora. How so? We're not so sure. Yet. But up-and-coming space probes, such as the Juno, may soon help us answer this and many other questions we still have. What I find most fascinating are Jupiter's moons. Over 60 have been discovered so far. Most of these are quite small, but the four major moons, the one discovered by Galileo, are as large or larger than our own moon, and even larger, a bit larger, than planet Mercury. These four main moons are Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. Io, Europa, and Ganymede are in what we call orbital resonance, which is to say gravitational forces between them have caused their orbits to line up with each other. For every one orbit of Ganymede, Io orbits four times, and Europa orbits twice. This resonance keeps the orbits of these moons less than perfectly circular. This in turn results in tidal forces that perpetually stretch and compress these moons, which heats them up internally. The effect is most pronounced with Io, which is closest to Jupiter. So much internal heat is generated that its insides are molten. Look at its dramatic landscape. It's one of the most volcanically active places in our solar system. Hey, 
There's Io with Jupiter in the background. Which way is the sun? Toward the left or the right? Good. When in space, you got to think spatially. And the best reference we've got is the sun, of course. While Io is hot, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto are much colder. And get this, covered in ice. That's water ice. So they're known as the icy moons of Jupiter. The European Space Agency is currently planning a mission dedicated to exploring these moons. The project is called JUICE for Jupiter Icy Moon Explorer. If all goes well, it will be sending us more detailed information about these moons in the 2030s. But why travel there? Well, listen up. Here's where it gets rather interesting. Europa, like Io, is warmed by tidal forces, right? Evidence strongly suggests that there's enough warmth to melt the lower layers of the surface ice, which is to say, below Europa's icy surface likely lies a vast subsurface ocean. We're talking about a lot of liquid water. The estimated amount on Europa is about twice the amount of water found in all of Earth's oceans. A similar situation occurs on Ganymede, though radioactivity likely plays a larger role in providing the warmth to melt the ice. So both Europa and Ganymede have the four fundamental ingredients needed for the formation of life. An energy source, liquid water, minerals, and geologic stability. Farther out is Callisto. Its orbit around Jupiter is quite circular, which means there's not much tidal heating within. Maybe radioactivity gives it a relatively minor subsurface ocean. Might there be life down there? Not likely, because it's so cold. Europa and Ganymede would be the first places to look. Okay. That's Jupiter and its major moons. Next up, let's take a closer look at the next largest planet, and that's Saturn. Wait! Look at Jupiter here. And where's the sun? I'm hoping you're mindful enough to recognize that the sun would be right behind your right shoulder. Good science to you. Mm -hmm.